Welcome to Ridge Meadow Soccer Club's uh, Skill Centre Implementation Presentation. This is uh, going to be more detail on our U11s, U12s and U13 age groups and uh, the programme moving forward from uh, Spring 2023. I'd just like to touch on a, a bit more detail on our Canada Soccer Club licensing. In, in July this year, um, we achieved the National Youth Club license, which we're you know, very proud of as a club and as a community. Um, there's 15 other clubs in BC that have that uh, designation. So uh, I'm like the only one in the Maple Ridge and, and Pitt Meadows area. There's 142 criteria and it really was a, a huge task uh, for us as a club to achieve. So, so very proud um, of, of that achievement. I just want to touch on a, a couple of items in, in a bit more detail. And uh, one of the things is with, with the National Youth Club license, Canada Soccer is, is looking for you know, the, the highest expectations, not just on the field, but off it as well. How we function as a club, um, our, our governance structure, our operation structure, and also the, the technical side off the field with our planning and how we implement that into, into, our, into our programming on the field to support players, coaches and, and, and referees. Um, with the National Youth Club license was, was the Skill Centre. And a big part of the skill centre, and this is this is a phrase that, that we'll, we'll, we'll talk about again in a bit more detail later in the presentation, but the best environment possible for as many young players as possible for as long as possible. That's that's the key, the key part of the skill centre and what we want to implement uh, at Ridge Meadows Soccer Club. And finally, um, achieving the National Youth Club licence, uh, we now have the opportunity to, to field teams in the, the BC Soccer uh, Premier League. And that will be from 2024 and our intake age group will be our 2011 borns. This again is a really exciting achievement for, for Ridge Meadows Soccer Club. We'll be the only club in Maple Ridge Pit Meadows that can, you know, can form teams in, in this league. And it completes the pathway for us, uh, the player pathway for, for players wishing to, uh, to, to play at this level. They can now do so um, in, in this community instead of having to, to travel outside. Recently, um, BC Soccer has announced some changes to the U13 game formats. Um, there'll be more uh, information uh, over the coming weeks and months regarding this. And this has been a long time uh, in the making. Um, th this follows the Canada Soccer grassroots standards um, that they, they recommend throughout the, the whole of, of the country. And it's really here to support players at the, this age and stage of, of their development. Um, the, the game format, um, is played on the same field as the 8v8, so there's no huge changes there with our, you know, set up an organisation. Um, but you know, it will allow for for players to have a more realistic environment um, on their game day. And the 11v11 fields and the size of the goals, they're they're huge. Uh, they're, they're so big, um, it, it's difficult for for a lot of players. But this this smaller sided game will help benefit players at, at, at 12 years old. It also allows for players to continue their development in the small-sided game um, and delays the 11 v 11 selection for another year at, at U14. Um, yeah, it provides opportunities for, for players to have more 1v1s and 2v2s, attacking and defending experiences, you know, be on the ball more. You know, the 11 v 11 game, because of the size of the field, you know, how many touches of the ball do players get within, within the game time? This, in a smaller environment, allows players to get on the ball more you know, opportunities to score, more defending opportunities and, and developing technique and decision making at the same time. And, you know, the, the 11 v 11 game is very detailed uh, with, with tactics. You know, is that right for, for U13s? Um, you know, they're still at the stage where they're learning about the game. Some more basic information uh, and, and tactics around, around that in the 9v9 game is probably more appropriate uh, for players at that age. Um, implementing the, the skill centre changes our um, player pathway slightly. The U13s move into our U11s and U12 development phase, and together with the U8s and U10s, that, that is our skill centre. Um, BCSPL will come in at U14 um, for the development phase on U14s and U15s, and over time, as, we, uh, as players um, get older, we will have BCSPL within their transitional phase at U16 and U17 as well. 
So moving into spring 2023, um, this is how our uh, skill centre is, is going to function. Um, at the moment, um, we have a United programme with, with Albion FC, and that's not going to continue uh, f from the spring. So Ridge Meadows, we're, we're going to look to form our own Division 1, Division 2 and Division 3 teams with players um, selected for these environments would all register with, with Ridge Meadows Soccer Club. We'll have Ridge Meadows Apparel um, at home and, and away for Div 1 and Div 2. And for selections into these teams, you know, our current players will, will be assessed in season um, and there'll be opportunities for players um, external um, to come in and be assessed for, for these levels of play as well. So a bit more detail on, on how we form teams. Um, the current players um, we assess in season. We want players to be to be comfortable in their own environments, their team practices, their game days, and that's the better way to, to assess players over a longer period of time. But coaches, team coaches will provide their own uh, assessment reports along with our technical staff and phase directors um, they have their own assessment reports for, for players during this time. Uh, timelines for external players to come in. Um, there's uh, for the spring season, November to January, and for the fall and winter, there's January to March, and also an extended period from April to June as well uh, for players. And that all moves together to, to our team formation timelines. For our Division 1 and Division 2, it'll be our, which we will call our performance group, uh, uh, that will be in February and March for both spring and fall. And for our Division 3, it's uh, March and August uh, to form those teams. I wanted to highlight our technical staff organisation as well. So as players move from U4 through to U18, these are the, the roles of the technical staff and, and uh, the people assigned to, to those jobs. And moving into the development phase, um, Graham Thompson, will be the phase director uh, for that program. Yeah, I just wanted to speak a little bit about our technical team we have here at Ridge Meadows Soccer Club. Um, we're really proud to have such good people with some uh, really strong experience in, in the game of soccer and, and in children and youth uh, soccer development. Th these are coaches that have achieved uh, higher levels of certifications, which can take over 11 months to achieve. The, the children's youth and, and A licenses uh, can take a long time and are, are a huge investment. Um, these modern day licenses uh, teach us about how children and, and teenagers learn and what we can implement into our training and game environments to support them at the correct ages and stages of their growth and development. So the development phase director is Graham Thompson and he will be the main point of contact for all coaches and families if there's any questions regarding the program or in season if anything comes up graham is the is the person uh, to speak to and um, graham and i work to form the division one division two and division three teams and graham manages the movement of players in season as well so all the communication will, will be from graham so our division one and division two teams will be part of the, the performance group and this will be for like-minded players selected into this environment uh, to compete at these, these levels. A Division 3 players, this environment, we want to be um, equally as positive and equally as, as challenging for players. And there is movement through the season from Division 3 into the performance group as well. The Regional Academy is available for any player at the club. Um, this can be an optional uh, second or third session uh, if the players wish to, wish to join that. Sports science is going to be a really big part of our, our program in moving into 2023. It will be, be phased in um, over, the, over the coming years. And it's not just about um, soccer fitness or fitness in general, but injury prevention and injury recovery and, and ways that players can support their physical and, and mental well-being as well. So more information on this as we move into 2023 and, and beyond. So our competition structure doesn't uh, really change that much. Um, with the implementation of the skill centre. We will still uh, be with the BC uh, Coastal Soccer League um, and our, our soccer districts as well. And in the spring, um, we choose to go into the Cascadia Soccer League as well. The only uh, change that we may see is the implementation of, of the 9v9 game format at U13. 
I wanted to highlight a few items in our program matrix. Uh, the registration fees highlighted here are for 2022. Implementing the Skills Centre doesn't mean that there's an automatic increase in our programming uh, in 2023. That's all going to be based on the 2023 and 2024 budgeting that the board will be working on. And, and more details on that will be in the new year. The other area I wanted to talk more on is our phased approach in moving towards volunteer coaching teams within our Division 1 and Division 2 teams. At the moment, uh, those coaches will be pay, uh, pay positions and we would hire uh, coaches to run those teams. We're, we're a growing club and a growing community. And as we plan for the future, we're going to have more teams within these divisions. And it's going to be very difficult for us to employ um, coaches uh, to, to run and manage these teams. It's a very small pool of coaches that are available to, to coach teams. And it's just not going to be sustainable for us moving in the future. And the other side of it, and most importantly, is the amount of good volunteer coaches that we have here. We have some great people here that, that live in the community and have been working with their teams for a number of years. And we want to provide opportunities for our volunteer coaches to work in our U11, U12 and U13 Division 1 and Division 2 programming. So a bit more detail on our coach pathway and development. As a community uh, sports club, we're, we're just like everyone else. Uh, we need volunteer coaches to support our players and our teams. Um, we have our coaches, our players, our officials, and without one of those, we've got no, no game. We want to encourage more volunteer coaches to, to, to step up and, and work with our teams and the players in the younger age groups to provide a bigger pool of coaches when we get to our older age groups as well. So the coaching pathway, um, Ridge Meadows Soccer Club, we, we run and, and provide the active start, fundamentals, learn to train and, and soccer for life training. The C license uh, is run by BC Soccer and the children's and youth license are more for, for coaches that want to work in, in soccer part time and full time. So as a technical staff, we, we want to help support the, the volunteer coaches with their development. So we have our phase director oversight. We have our training and game models which provides the details of, of what we're looking for within our training sessions and our game day environments. We will do internal education and informational sessions to support the implementations of those models and team led practices as well. So we have technical staff working with the players and the coaches to implement our training and game models. We want to help provide uh, some support to families with their, with their planning and their schedules. So our annual plan lists our key dates in our spring and fall and winter seasons. Everything is always tentative until we receive our field allocations from Maple Ridge and Pitt Meadows City. Um, for the spring, we will receive that in mid-January. But these key dates will help you with your planning for, for holidays and other sport registrations um, as you get closer to that, to that time. I just wanted to spend a bit of time talking about soccer and other sports. Early specialisation does not guarantee later year success in that sport. There's been lots of research in, in children and sports development, and it's highlighted the need for players who choose to play multi sports are provided that opportunity to do so. And that's within the long term athlete development. And this isn't just uh, about soccer. This is globally for all sports, whether you're in hockey, lacrosse, basketball, baseball, and I'll encourage you to reach out to those other sports as well. At Ridge Meadows Soccer Club, we wanna, we wanna provide both. We wanna provide uh, more soccer opportunities for players that love the game and can't get enough and want more outside their team commitments. And also for multi-sport athletes as well that want time during the week and during the season to play other sports as well. So how we do that, we have our fixed days. Um, during, the, during the season for our team practices and games. Always tentative based on our field allocation from, from the Maple Ridge and Pitt Meadows City. We have our training to game ratios. So in the fall and winter, we have a two to one. And in the spring, we have a one to one. We have our additional programming. Uh, so like I said, for players that want more soccer, it's available to them outside their team commitments. And for multi-sport players as well, they might have another free day during the week that they want to do more soccer as well. And that's going to be optional for for all players at Ridge Meadows Soccer Club. And the big part of this is open communication, working together, families and the club to, to provide a schedule that supports the players' needs. We need to make sure that our teams are competitive within their league play, but working together, we can provide a, a great soccer experience for the multi-sport players and for the team during the season. 
So planning for the future is a, a big part of our, our roles here as a technical team. We don't just look at um, where this age group is now, U11, where they are as of today, as of November or December. We need to look beyond that and need to look at where this age group is going to be at U14, at U16, at U18. Um, we want the best environment possible for as many youth players as possible for as long as possible. You know, every player within Ridge Meadows Soccer Club is our priority and we want to help develop every single player. Um, as we go through the age groups, formats change and roster sizes increases. So that's something that we need to be aware of as well. And here's um, some more detail on that. So if we're at U U11, we have our 8v8s and our maximum roster size of, of 12. And as we increase into U14, you know, we go into our 11v11 game, roster size increase. And even at U17 and U18, our roster sizes increases uh, as well there. And these are our minimums. So this is what we want to work towards to make sure as a club, we have teams in every single division, uh, in every single age group. Uh, we need to develop every single player, every single player we want to re-register again next year and be a part of Ridge Meadows Soccer Club. When we get into the later age groups, there will be natural drop off uh, with our teenagers when they start to get their driver's licenses and jobs and school becomes busy, other interests. So it's really important we, we have a big pool of players um, to help support, you know, forming our teams in the older age groups. Yeah, and finally, I just wanted to touch on managing expectations. Um, player development is not a straight line, um, and nor is life. There's always bumps in the road, ups and downs, uh, as as we as we as we grow and as we learn. And not being selected for the division that the player expects or the family expects is not failure. We want to make sure that we're we're placing players in in the right environment for the needs of that player at that time of their journey. We want the player to be successful and to be challenged and to reach their potential. You know, we need patience. It's, um, you know, it's, it's a big word as we get older, you know, patient, our patience gets, gets thinner, but um, we need to be patient with, with children and, and, and youths as they learn and grow. Uh, there's things that we need to consider as well about a January born and a December born. There could be huge differences with uh, with these types of players and they could be in the same team it's not always the case but we need to be aware of that and support those players um, at those times you know other interests outside of soccer maybe you know the player starts to like some something else and then three months later it's back to soccer again and that that can uh, influence um, how, uh, how a player develops as well and these are more realistic journeys for a player reaching their potential at u18 it's it's going to be ups and downs, bumps in the roads, like we said. And, you know, as a, as a family and as a club, we want to support players um, with continuing their soccer journey, especially through through the through the tough times as well, so they can reach their potential.